Do you have to be a genius to create a masterpiece? <laughs> Ooh, do I have to be a genius to make a masterpiece? No, I don't think so. You know, it's here's the great thing about this industry is that it's collaborative. Um, I think that there's a lot of people, if you look at some of these movies that, uh, I think one of the classic examples is Casablanca. It was an absolute disaster in the making of, but somehow the pieces magically fell together to create this incredible thing. And that can happen. I mean, there's a lot of, I won't name names, but there's a lot of directors that do one great film and the rest of their films are just terrible. And you're like, how in the world did that first one end up so good and the rest of these are so bad? It's probably, a lot of it's because they were probably had this amazing support team around them to help carry them along. And that's one of the, I'd say, advantages to directing is that, I'm not advocating for this, but you you can do it and not know what you're doing. And actually that happens, it's very common. <laughs> it's very common. Because think about it, like if your DP knows his stuff or her stuff, he doesn't, you know, your director doesn't have to know where to put the camera. Uh, if you have amazing actors and they're just spot on with, they just know how to do it and you're, you know, your production designer is amazing. You know, your director, you know, you can phone it in and be fine. Like your other departments will carry you. There's a great comfort in that actually. Like if you come in and you have no idea how to shoot the scene and your DP is amazing, well, they will help you. So no, you don't have to be a genius. Um, and I, I think there's a comfort in that because, you know, the insecure, then maybe the potential insecurity that's there of, ooh, what if I don't really know what I'm doing? I think not all of us struggle with that, but I definitely think that's a thing. I remember hearing an interview with um, the guy who, the, the composer for Gladiator and Dark Knight and uh, Hans Zimmerman. I remember hearing an interview with him years ago where he said, wow, I just landed this job. I think it was the job for Gladiator. He's like, wow, I just landed the job to do the score for Gladiator. I hope no one discovers that I'm a fake. It's like, what? Really? You think that? And I know there's a lot of people, very accomplished people who, who have that same thought of what if, what if I'm not a genius? What if <laughs> there's some flaw in me that is going to keep me from getting to up there? Um, no, you don't have to be. So this is where it becomes really important to make sure you're surrounded by the absolute best, you know, really talented artists and filmmakers. And that's, that's awesome in filmmaking, you know. It's a really positive thing when your DP is better than you are. Uh, wow, that's cool. I, I've worked with actors who I can tell would be amazing directors. And they have such good instincts. They're out directing me sometimes. I could choose to be insecure about that, but better to go, you know, that's actually a pretty good idea. Let's do that. I, I like your idea. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Dude, let's do that. So that's, that's a really, uh, I, I think, uh, that's a good thing. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. That doesn't mean, that doesn't give us permission to just phone it in. I do think that we need to bring our A game and be prepared when we're, when we're working. Um, but no, genius, no, no, you can, there's lots of people working today that probably shouldn't be there, <laughs> but you know, that's okay. It's all right. That right there is the number one skill that a director needs to have is how to outthink all the problems all the time because they are coming at you a thousand miles an hour. And when it's going great and things are all running in the same direction, that's awesome. But when you when you're faced with the worst, that's where the testament of how good you are really will come true. Um, when we did Kenobi, we were shooting out in the Trone of Pinnacles, which is, it's central California, it's kind of near Death Valley, and it's this, it's a, uh, there's not a lot out there, there's this, this land with these big, it's a magical looking place, these big spires sticking up out of nowhere, but you know, we're three hours or more from LA. Everyone came in on this bus yeah, and it's a, tr it's a lot of people out there doing all of this stuff. And a lot of, not just, it's not just a love story or something simple, it is droids and 
stormtroopers and stunt guys and like all the, I mean, a million different children, you know, and I keep in mind the stormtroopers can't hear you when they're, when you're trying to direct them and they can't, because the helmet, you can't hear anything. You also can't see anything because you're, you, you have this much to see. First day, we had wind gusts up to 30, 40 miles an hour. And so I realized I couldn't shoot anything that involved dialogue. Huh, okay, so how am I gonna deal with that? And then the props truck got into a car accident on the way to set. So we had no droids, we had no speeder, we had no, we had this big moisture evaporator tower. Didn't have any of it, didn't show up. All I have are some actors and high winds. So that is a, a perfect example of all the plans that I had made, all the storyboards and shot lists that I had all went right out the window because all of a sudden I have nothing to shoot. I, we can go over here and do this. Oh no, we can't because it's, the, it's too windy. Okay, so all of a sudden I was forced to severely think on my feet and basically rebuild the whole film in my head. And we started by shooting inserts, which is the complete backwards way you're supposed to do it. When you're doing a, a, a scene or show or something, you, you generally start with your master your coverage and then you figure out, oh, we need the guy pulling the wallet out. Well, this had to be the total opposite of that. It was, I, I could get away with like one line of dialogue or something. Like there's a shot in there, if you've seen it, where Aunt Baru has the, she's binocular, she turns to the camera, the camera pushes out behind her and she goes, oh, it's stormtroopers. Um, that was during that day because I <laughs> had, it was one line, we would sit there, we'd get the camera set up, we're waiting and the wind would go, Action, <laughs> bang, hit the shot, and then that's it. Um, then the next day we had a little kid on set and he was so little that he didn't, he wasn't quite old enough to really understand that he was on a set. So it, to him it's playtime and costume. Um, very, it makes it really hard. He's one of the youngest actors I've ever directed so it makes it hard to, to uh, you know, how do you, to handle because you can't be super rigid about your schedule and your shot list because he's he's gonna be the way he wants to be and you know he's afraid of the stormtroopers and starts crying and you know it's just like a so your ability as a director to think on your feet is super vital uh, that's what that job required um, the ways that you can fight that the ways that you can or fight maybe is the wrong word. The way you can prepare for that, um, because it will happen to you if eventually there will be days where things are going to go completely wrong. First is to prepare more than you even think you need to. Like having as many detailed shot lists or storyboards that you can come up with is super helpful, especially for something like that where it's very complex, lots of moving pieces costumes, actors, kids, da da da, really knowing what, you, if you get on set and you're gonna be going, and you're thinking you're gonna figure it out on the day where to put the camera, that's a very dangerous spot to be because that may happen anyway, whether you want it to or not. So at least having an idea before you get there is really good. But even that's not enough, like understanding I need to have this stand out between these two people. I wanna start with this wide drone shot coming down. Then I wanna get this over the shoulder, but I really wanna get this intimacy between these two people, whatever it is. Um, I think that having a very strong background in editing is the, I won't say number one, I will say that's probably the number two skill that you need as a director is really knowing how to cut a scene in your head while you're working because it does ha it happens all the time where you'll be on set. Shoot, 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 shoot. Do we have the scene? Mm -hmm. uh, hang on, so we got him, we got him, got the master. Oh, you know what we never did? We never got him pulling the thing out of his pocket. We, we should get that. Oh, and maybe the sun's going down. You, can, you have time for one shot. How are you gonna get that and get your scene? Um, th there is no other way to really get good at that unless you're editing spending thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in an edit suite putting together other people's things because then it'll just, it'll ingrain in you a reflex of what you're gonna actually need on set. 
Um, if you don't have that, you are just at a, such a disadvantage. Um, if you're in the position, like personally, I hate being in the position of not knowing something, of not understanding how a camera works. I don't like that. Like, I don't understand, not understanding the difference between an 85 and a 35 lens. Like, what does that mean? If, if you find yourself in that position, I think it's really important to spend some time in the camera department to figure it out because it just smooths it out for you so much when you're there. So when it comes to editing, really having an understanding of that. So in Kenobi, it's a perfect example. The last, because we had so many problems from the weather and everything coming in, the last half of the last day of that was the most insane day I've ever experienced on set. It was, our, we were in a bowl. The sun is going down. And when it's down, you're done, period. And you, there was money on the line. There was an investor that, several investors that had ponied up large sums of money to make sure this happened. And you better get it done. You better get it done. There's like, no, and you are in the pressure cooker. You are, it's go time. So no time to like not know what to do. We were, I had to go, okay, we have to kill the bad guy. Go here, go here, you know, throw the lightsaber, one shot, two takes, done, move on. And we were like leapfrogging into certain sets. And the final fight scene, when he does the big lightsaber thing, we actually ran out of sun. The sun went down and dipped behind the little bowl that we were in. So we ran out to another location where we could still see just a, like a foot of sun on the horizon just a little bit. And it was two circles around him, one wide, one tight, and that's it. But I knew because I'd spent so long editing that, we, that that would give us enough to get us the story. We just barely got it. Um, that, that is such a huge skill that, that's necessary.